I wonder what he would do now. What would be his prescription for the situation in Israel? Well, you have to ask Henry. I would never dare speak for him. But in just listening to Neil Ferguson, it occurs to me a new movie is coming out called Maestro about Leonard Bernstein. Mm -hmm. uh, Henry Kissinger was a maestro of foreign policy and really understood where, how all the instruments fit together. Uh, he didn't always get it right. I mean, my view is that uh, by escalating the war in Vietnam, uh, a lot of people were unnecessarily killed. He says he did that uh, because that's how he could close the war. Um, but I wonder if there was a better path. Let me just say that he and I sat next to each other on the Defense Policy Board for 10 years. And what a master class that was for me. And he told me all about how everything happened. One thing, I, I just have to tell his story, Joe, is how he accidentally became National Security Advisor to Richard Nixon. Hmm. He had supported... Um, uh, Nelson Rockefeller. Rockefeller lost to mm -hmm. Nixon. Uh, during the transition, someone called him from the White House and said, the president-elect would like to meet you. He goes down, he meets the president-elect. A day later, uh, Haldeman or one of those guys calls him and offers him the job of national security advisor. What does Henry do? He says, I'll have to think about it. Uh, so then a day later, he calls up Nelson Rockefeller, his buddy, and says, well, what do you think? And Nelson Rockefeller says, you idiot. Accept it. What's wrong with you? <laughs> and so, you know, if that hadn't happened, where where would Henry Kissinger have been all these hundred years? Amazing. But uh, truly an amazing legacy, an amazing, amazing legacy. Um, Jane, you know, his accidental, uh, you could say, maybe stumble into government. But then I continuously ask myself, how did he stay? in the sense that he's briefed every single U.S. president since Nixon, even though he wasn't in government. And you call it an amazing legacy, but it's, it's quite a mixed legacy. I think of Cambodia and Vietnam and Chile and Argentina and Bangladesh. Why was he continuously consulted over the years? He knew everybody. He was, he had a strategic mind. You didn't always have to agree with it, but uh, my idea is that, or my thought is that his 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 positions got better over time. And the Nixon to China uh, thing, which happened in in that time frame, uh, transformed him into a you know a really superstar foreign policy advisor. I mean, give Nixon some credit too. Um, but that changed the whole dynamic of our our relationship with China. Brought China into the modern world. You could now maybe say, since China in some ways is a pacing challenge to us, as our, our national defense strategy says, maybe that was a mistake. But no, it wasn't a mistake. And uh, a lovely thing, by the way, is that I, I'm told that when Henry Kissinger went back to uh, Beijing recently on his 100th birthday tour, he went everywhere, uh, but he was there, that 700 members of our staff in Beijing uh, lined up to give him a standing O. Hmm. That's a pretty big deal. These are all great stories, Jane. We need your take on what's happening in Israel and what might happen in the coming hours here. There seems to be a renewed spirit to extend this truce, maybe only by a day, as we saw late yesterday. It's pretty tenuous until we found out at the last moment this was going to happen. I know the Secretary of State is back in Tel Aviv. We understand the CIA director is still in Qatar. Can they make that happen? Well, uh, I don't know. Uh, but the, the problem is I, I think Hamas in some ways is playing us. And let's remember, it's not just Hamas. Who's pulling the strings on Hamas? Iran. Yeah. Uh, they, you know, let it, give us a little leg, and then they pull it back. And this random shooting in the bus stop mm -hmm. uh, today in, t in uh, Jerusalem uh, could be the harbinger of more things like that. Uh, uh, obviously, Blinken and Biden, and I commend them for it, don't want Israel to overreact. But that seems to have be the Netanyahu playbook. And if we end up with massive violence, more violence on the West Bank, and uh, whether it's uh, information or disinformation that's weaponized across the world, that really not only hurts Israel, but it hurts us. And let's, what is the end game here? The end game is two states for two people. How do we get there? That's where the focus needs to be. And I'm very disappointed that the Sunni uh, Arab states surrounding Qatar, which is not a Sunni Arab state, and surrounding Iran and Syria— uh, are not speaking up more. I think that they have uh, much more leverage than they're using. They're wealthy. Uh, they're successful. Um, their trade with Israel would make them e e even more wealthy and successful. And and it's a shame because the, the time is passing. And what, uh, would I like 
violence to resume? Absolutely not. Mm -hmm. I hope it doesn't. We only have half the hostages back. Let's remember that, too. It's right. 100 out of 220 or 240, whatever the number is. Mm -hmm. Saudi Arabia's foreign minister was just in China. He was just at the U.N. He's doing a global tour. Um, what more do you want to see from the Arab state specifically? Well, I want them, uh, here's, here's an idea, random idea, to say they would join a peacekeeping force uh, as a temporary measure in Gaza to uh, uh, keep the peace until the Palestinian Authority and maybe the Israelis, too, have new elections, have new leadership, or uh, it's up to them to pick it, but have, have at least voted on what leadership they want, uh, again, with the end goal of, of two states for two peoples. And, and, you know, those states have very good military capacity. They could do this, uh, joining with uh, Qatar, which, remember, a few, just a few years ago, they were boycotting Qatar because Qatar was too close to Iran. Do we remember this? And Iran is uh, now working closely with Russia in Ukraine. You were talking about Ukraine aid before. Yep. Imagine if this thing doesn't end well, how much more power Iran will have and how much more power Russia and Iran will have as a combo, which is another reason why the U.S. cannot pull back on our support for Ukraine. 